guys, welcome to this new video. In today's interview, we're gonna discuss about life in Vietnam versus UK, the opportunities that you have here in Ho Chi Minh City, as well as if you are looking for launching a side business, Ho Chi Minh City is probably the best place to get started. And I have with me today, Connor. You've been living in Vietnam for three years. You are having an English teaching job, but on the side, you are having a side hustle that you are pushing hard. So I'm very happy to invite you today uh, for this interview. Can you start by introducing yourself to our audience? Absolutely. Firstly, thank you for inviting me on. Uh, my name is Connor. I've been in Vietnam now for three years. And I guess by, by trade and my job, I'm a public school teacher here in Ho Chi Minh City. But also my side hustle is my podcast. My podcast, which is Comeback, The Comeback Beats the Setback, which I began in January 2021. And there are now over 440 episodes for you to choose from. Thanks, Connor. So uh, actually, I think in Vietnam, uh, and especially in Ho Chi Minh City, is a very good place when you start uh, to move overseas because you have a land that has opportunities. As well, if you are, for instance, a native English speaking person, you can also teach it English on the side. Can you first talk about that, about English teaching job here uh, in Southeast Asia and especially in Vietnam? Yeah, sure. Um, so teaching English in Asia is very common. It's very popular, especially with people from the UK. And I chose to do so when I was 21, mainly because I fancied a chapter abroad and teaching English is almost the most obvious route. So that's why I chose to do so. And the only reason why it was Vietnam, which might sound bizarre, is that there were so many different countries and so many different opportunities. I thought, which one do I choose? The first one to give me a job with accommodation, I would take. And that happened to be Vietnam three years ago with a company called Major Education. And here I am now three years later. Okay, Connor, so actually in the teaching English job, you have different types, right? You can work for English centers, you can work for public schools, international schools, or even doing mentoring. Can you uh, wrap up a little bit uh, the different opportunities you have in teaching in uh, Vietnam? Absolutely, yeah. There are lots and lots of opportunities. Um, Vietnam, there are the public school route, which I chose, which is a nine to five. You go to schools usually all around the city, or you will have your own school, which you attend every single day. Now, language centers are the evening classes. You have your VE West, ILA, um, other centers. I can't quite think of the names. You also, if you are a qualified teacher, you have international schools such as BIS, CIS. There are quite a few. And if you are qualified in the teaching route, if that was your, I suppose, major, or if that was your degree in the UK, then you can go into a teaching at an international school, which is, I suppose, more suited to the teaching style. You learn more about the trade. I guess it's a bit more specific. Whilst you can also do private gigs, for example, if you go on Facebook, which is very popular here in Vietnam, you can find lists of people looking for a teacher for a class for a night or someone to teach their children or their cousin or a group of adults on a Sunday or Coffee Talk English. There are lots of opportunities to teach English in Vietnam and having English as your native language can really be a superpower, which I've used to my benefit. So I'd strongly consider it. So actually, Connor, it used to be very easy to find a job after they've been this a pandemic and now there are more countries also in the region like the Philippines that they can more easily probably get visa or at least come here to check the opportunities. Do you think there are still uh, opportunities for Western people like UK or American or Australian to come here uh, to Vietnam if they have no experience or not uh, the right degree first? to come up and finally become an English teacher? I do think it's entirely possible. At my old company, I would say only half the company had degrees. A lot of other companies that I've worked for, you don't necessarily need a degree. Now, some you do, some you don't. So I, I don't want to say it depends because it's so generic, but it really does depend. And my assumption is that because of post pandemic, I feel like they want teachers in. I see a lot of places hiring. They're almost desperate to. And I, I do have a motto that you shouldn't disqualify yourself before entering the arena. So a lot of people might not apply to teach in Vietnam because they don't have a degree or no experience. Try. There might be a place that accepts you and can bring you over here. And once you're over here, then you can build some more experience. So I can't really comment too much about everywhere because I only know from my current role, I do need a degree. 
but I feel like there are opportunities to teach if you don't have a degree. So I would still encourage to look into it and try. It's not essential, it just helps. Okay, uh, you are teaching English, but you're also teaching science, mathematics. Yeah. Uh, is there other um, type of things you can teach in Vietnam as a foreigner? As a foreigner, yeah. I think you should look at your skill set. So for example, this might be related to, I suppose, private gigs or anything else. If you're experienced in, say, business or marketing or anything kind of related to that, you can probably find a gig that will support that for you. If you're into sport, PE teaching is quite common. I know a lot of people here who have gone on to become PE teachers or art teachers because that was their degree and I feel like it really depends on what you do you can find something for you now if you're a teacher by trade anyway I would strongly suggest using Vietnam because you can get I suppose the more lucrative roles for teaching here at the international schools and the centers where your pay grade is much much higher than if you worked an international sorry a public school or a language center. So if you're already a teacher, I would strongly suggest coming to Vietnam because it gets even better. But if you have a skill set like art or sport, try Vietnam because there are more specific roles for you. For example, I know people who've taken the English route when they arrive, which is typical, but their background is sport and PE. And then they find a PE job and they're set for the next 10 years. So think about what skills you already own, what major you studied, what kind of things you can offer, come here and try to apply it. That would be my advice. Okay, thanks for the tips, uh, Connor. So life in Vietnam, we say there are opportunities here for native English speakers. Uh, not only there are also French people here who can find a job just with the, the fact that there are a lot of uh, French Vietnamese companies that are here. So there are opportunities into finding teaching job, but not only. Uh, what about the lifestyle and then what we can get in Vietnam? Cost of living, I don't know. The way it's so easy to settle here and to travel. Mm. What are other benefits that you found here in Asia compared to UK? Um, I think with any kind of decision and any, I suppose, big move, so from Asia to the West, there will be pros and there will be cons, and they're often interlinked. For example, here there's a lot more freedom. It's a lot more flexible and relaxed. With that is a con of ambiguity, where sometimes you think, Do I need this rule? Do I need to follow this procedure? What are the guidelines? They're often unclear. So with freedom comes that ambiguity, which can be tricky. Also here, there's a huge international community. People from different cultures, backgrounds, beliefs, values, which can be amazing in expanding your network, especially on an international scale. However, with that brings perhaps lack of familiarity and having to adapt where In the UK, you generally know the mindset of quite a lot of people, but if you're mixing with Australian, French, South African, Danish, Vietnamese, and much, much more, that also brings a different kind of, a different kind of sense of having to get used to something. You have to adapt. Likewise, you live in an amazing country with brilliant opportunities around the corner, great places. Internationally, with Thailand, Laos, within the country, Phu Quoc, Bu Tao, Da Nang, Mo Nhe, However, you're very, very far away from your home and your friends and your family. So you can interlink the two and work out which one suits you best. And as much as I love Saigon, Vietnam, and I've been here for three years, I don't think it's for everybody. I think you should really think about the pros and the cons before you come here and see if the pros suit you. If they completely suit you, absolutely go for it. But if you think the cons will be a bit tricky to handle, give it some second thought. So from your own uh, ex experience, Pros and cons, can you list uh, some of them? Yeah, sure. I think for pros, for me, networking, it's been absolutely game-changing, where I've met people from so many different backgrounds. I've been genuinely enthused and inspired by them. Um, I think in terms of cons, sometimes I miss my familiarity at home. I do miss, I suppose, the basics. I do miss family members. I miss friends. But ultimately, I know I'm in a better place. I think more nostalgia. Like, I don't enjoy missing social events like birthdays and Christmases, but it's the price you pay. So I suppose I've had a mixture on that, go, okay. on that note. Uh, thanks, uh, Kono, for your feedback and your uh, insight about life in Vietnam versus UK. There will be obviously uh, different expectation as well as different experience and own feeling of living here uh, compared to your own country. So actually, if we come now, uh, Connor, to the side hustle that you are pushing here, you interview more than 400 uh, expats and local here in Ho Chi Minh City. 
uh, why did you choose to do that podcasting uh, side hustle? And then how was this journey starting everything from scratch? Mm, it was a really useful side hustle for me. For example, I studied journalism. So I did have that background of conducting an interview, doing research and more. But also it was a, a lovely step out of my comfort zone. It was a lovely challenge and I'll explain why. I enjoy talking to people. I enjoy meeting new people. I enjoy finding out their stories. But I feel like I could be introverted. And I, two years ago, I was very, very shy. And I wasn't making the sort of connections I wanted to. And it dawned upon me, if I start this podcast, and I go with it with my work ethic when I'm enthused by something, which I know I can get completely obsessed by, then I could make a really interesting platform to benefit me, to benefit my connections, to help other people share their stories and really build something pretty epic. And it hit me that I really needed to just go for it. And starting it wasn't really an issue because people in Vietnam were very friendly and welcoming. I'll just give an example. In December 2020, I was looking for guests to start a podcast and I had no idea how to source a guest. I thought you needed a big speech and a pitch. And I went to a bar on a Friday night and just asked a lady who was there and she said yes. Within a second, it was like, was it that easy? Mm -hmm. So just as a test, I went around the bar and asked everyone I could if they wanted to. Most people said yeah. I thought, what the fuck, this is simple. Let's get cracking and never really stopped from there. So here we are today, 400 plus episodes. Did you find any similarities uh, in all those uh, uh, diversity that you find in all the people that you, you, you met up here and interviewed? That's a great question. And it goes back to fundamental human principles. Everybody likes to be seen, heard and valued. And that comes up whatever country you're from or whatever reason you came to Vietnam. People like to talk their language, which is themselves. People like to talk about themselves but often devalue their own achievements. The amount of times I've spoken to amazing, genuinely interesting people who've achieved so much devalue themselves, where they'll say, oh, I'm not that interesting, or your guest looks so talented, I've only done this. I think, no, 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 you're much, much more than you believe. And I do think it is common across the board to suppose, I suppose, compare ourselves and devalue our achievements rather than acknowledge how far we've come. So I do see that pattern. And after a while, you can pick up and you can know where a conversation's leading. Where, for example, someone will say that they studied PE because their parents wanted them to, but they really wanted to study art. And whenever they say that, I know that further down the line, they will regret that and talk to me about how they changed. Likewise, people will say that they partied a lot and loved it in their early 20s. I know what's coming next. They'll get bored of it at some point. They'll realize that the friendships aren't genuine. They'll snap out of it and they'll find a hobby and look for some opportunity. So those are some of the ones I see. And just to wrap up on that final point, I think coming to Vietnam, if you're thinking about coming to Saigon, Give it some serious consideration and also think about getting a hobby because that will really transform your experience in an exponential way that you could not have imagined. Mm. Yeah, I mean, if you have similar interests with people, you can just find people that are just like you, uh, like-minded. And then, uh, as, as you mentioned, you were probably a little bit introverted. You find yourself a hobby that kind of push you out of your comfort zone. At the same mm. time, meeting like so many people that probably also brought you opportunities, right? Loads. Maybe one person bring you to one contact that finally can open you, I don't know, it's, uh, uh, an idea of starting something. Uh, what's the next upcoming plans that you have and milestone that you want to break uh, for, for your podcast? Yeah, um, when setting goals, I suppose, it's important to know like where you're at and what success is to you. A question that I often ask the guests is, what does success represent to you? Because for some it's money, for some it's status, for some it's achievement, it depends. For me, this is a huge success and was the moment I pressed play. The moment that nobody listened to it was still a success. And it always will be if I allow it to, because I just simply enjoy the process. I love doing this. I love taking time out of my day to find out a story from somebody about how they came back or why they do what they do. So it's already a success. And as long as I don't lose the intrinsic fulfillment, then it always will be a success. Now, with that, I also like to upscale. I like to improve, I like to evolve, and I like to see where I could go. So what I've been doing recently is speaking privately to people about self-development and starting their own podcast. I do a lot of writing, both blogs and books, which will be upcoming in the next few weeks and months. I 
And I think I should host more events where I get some speakers together and really try and, I suppose, connect the comeback community. Because I've interviewed so many different people now who all know each other. We should get together more often, I suppose, under the theme of comeback. So I'll probably do that. And I think maybe more video. I've started branching out slowly but surely, and today's a great reminder of why I should. I'm enjoying like navigating the cameras and going back to the comfort zone idea. Mm -hmm. I'm very comfortable with the audio now. Almost, I was about to say too comfortable, but I'm certainly very comfortable. I know what to do. I feel like I need to challenge myself a little bit more. So going into the YouTube and the visual uh, video space will be important for me. So that's probably next. Thanks, Kono, uh, for uh, sharing that. Uh, I wish you good luck into uh, pushing even more your podcast come back. So I will leave everything below in the description. If you want to check out the podcast that Kono has been releasing, there is quite a lot uh, every week. So you need to have a lot of uh, capacity to listen to uh, them. But surely you will find a very nice and interesting people to learn about so go check this out if you enjoy this video and if you have something to talk uh, about and to share your opinion leave us your comments below tell us i don't know what about the differences between uk mindset and then uh, the life in vietnam opportunities here uh, any other topics that we discuss today we'll be very happy to discuss with you guys uh, if you enjoy the video Leave us on up and I see you in the next one. Thanks, Connor. Thank you. Bye bye. Pin down and I'm gonna get it right. Dead on sight, like.